Happy Wednesday, happy new comic book day, webheads, guys. I think you're in store for a huge haul today. There are probably at least 20 books that I'm picking up, and that's not including back issues or any extras or variant covers. So get ready for a hefty haul, and hopefully you guys are finding everything that you are looking for at the shop today. I'll see you in a second. Welcome to Spider Slayer's Comic Book Hall, fans. This is episode 634, the video series where each and every week I share with you what I get at Comic Central located in the city of Sanford. So if you guys are ever in the Central Florida area, make sure you stop by. Tell Mike Spider Slayer sent you, and they'll provide you with great customer service. The mysterious black bag, so you can put your comic books that you buy there inside, guys. Absolutely awesome store. So before we get into the mysterious black bag, officially, I gotta show you this slab that I wound up getting. I wound up getting this copy of Wolverine issue 154. This is uh, from 2000. This is a Rob Liefeld cover, right? And this is an Eric Stevenson story. I got it at a 9.6 for the price of 65.99. So I thought this was a pretty bad looking, pretty badass looking slab. So I was like, you know what? Not a bad price. Picked it up, added to my little slab collection right here. So really cool to add that. All right, so now let's go into the official mysterious black bag. And inside are all these comic books. And like I said, guys, it's a hefty week. Check that out right there. Holy cow, man. It's a huge stack. Let's look at the back issue I wound up picking up. The Uncanny X-Men issue 304. We got a nice little foil right there, that 3D card. John Ramuda Jr. cover, man, way back then, right? Uh, hey, it is what it is. It's all about the X-Men these days. I most recently just watched episode six, another awesome episode. All right, so let's get into this week's comics. First thing I wind up getting is Crisis on Infinite Earths. This is issue one. Wind up getting the reprint here. It's even on like old school newspaper to give you that old school feel, right? That's pretty sick right there. I really like that. So I wind up scoring that one along with the uh, foil cover as well. Get a little shiny action going. All right, so let's go into a Marvel comic here. I wasn't gonna buy this, but people were telling me this is like a comedy book. So I don't know, we'll talk about it on Worthy Ones tomorrow. This is Roxxon Presents Thor issue one. So I guess this is this guy is supposedly like uh, like an ad campaign for Roxxon and he looks like Thor and it's got Greg Land artwork in there. So yeah, it looks like it could be funny. I, you know, we'll talk about it. We'll see what the outcome is for me after I get done reading it. So find out on Worthy Ones. All right, then we wind up getting Spider-Boy. This is issue six. I wind up getting that variant cover here as it's playing homage to like the Tomb of Dracula. I got a lot of these covers this week, so be prepared for that. This book has been really good so far. As we're learning about the origin a little bit on where Spider-Boy came from, where all his little friends came from, and uh, all those little details. I like the artwork. I think Dan Slott's doing a great job. We'll see where it continues to go. Then I wound up getting, I don't know why I got this. <laughs> the Blue Book issue three. I Maybe it was on my pool on accident. Maybe I actually grabbed it on accident. I don't read this on a normal basis. So yeah, if you read Blue Book, well, there you go. All right, then we got Batman Off World. This is issue four. This has been a hot minute since this one came out, so I'm looking forward to this next installment of this book. You gotta love the cover as he's got his like armor on, battling this guy, who knows what he is, some bird man. Uh, I think Jason Aaron has done a nice job with this series. It's been very entertaining, very gritty artwork as well. So yeah, looking forward to it. Then we wind up getting World's Finest, issue 26. Um, we got this book that has the, um, that's got met metal plick and Batmite in it. So listen, those guys are not my favorite characters, so I'm a little hesitant on this book. 
But knowing uh, Mark Wade and uh, Dan Mora here, I think they can provide a pretty solid story for the readers. So again, we'll see what it has to offer. All right, and then we have the continuation of Titans. This is issue 10, as our heroes are still dealing with the ramifications of Beast World. Uh, the humans, a lot of people don't like the Titans. Uh, they think they're responsible for the fall of, obviously, the problems of what happened on Earth. And, of course, Beast Boy, more importantly, because he was the one that turned into, like, Starro and all that other stuff and Amanda Waller has her hands and things as usual so it's a pretty cool book not bad it's better than it was when it first started so yep there's Titans issue 10 all right then we have Superman this is issue 13 House of Brainiac part 2 definitely looking forward to this comic issue 1 was man balls to the walls action artwork looks good once again in this second part can't wait to see the direction of this story. And if you're a Superman fan or been waiting for a story uh, for a long time, well, you're, it looks like you're finally getting it here, guys. So, yeah, pick up House of Brainiac Part 2 taking place in Superman Issue 13. Then we wind up getting Wonder Woman. Nice little cover here, man. That's gorgeous. This is Wonder Woman Issue 18. It looks like Wonder Woman could be doing battle against the Sovereign in this issue. So that's the main cover in here. And uh, here's the interior artwork looks good. We got the Sovereign there sitting on his little freaking chair. And he's got Wonder Woman. Oh no, he's got his lasso. Oh, I forgot what his la lasso of lies or something like that. So yeah, what can you expect from a Tom King book? You can expect a lot of narration for sure. So yeah, let's see what happens there. Next book we have is the Legacy of Nightwing, Legacy numbering 300, the 300 issue of this series. Here is the main cover right here, and uh, who knows what we're going to get out of this book. Um, looking forward to it. A little bit different artwork in here. It looks a little more con, uh, cartoony. That's your normal artist that's on this book. Was it Bruno Redondo? Uh, he's not on this main story, which looks like, but we'll see what this story has to offer. I heard like Tom Taylor's been getting some shit about this, you know, issue in general, or maybe it's a the Nightwing uh, run as a whole. So if you heard about that article, let me know in the comments below. All right, guys. So now we're gonna go into some of these uh, independent books. We have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the un told destiny of the foot clan this is issue two issue one was great had a lot of action we got this new like i don't know this like clan i forgot who the heck that they are called like uh, the dog star clan i think it was and it took on shredder's granddaughter like easily and she had to recover in a hospital and someone sacrificed their life so they could live so she could live so lots of great action casey jones is in this book looking forward to this next issue all right, and then we have the continuation of Spawn Rat, issue 352. I went with this cover. It looks pretty sick. Uh, we get to see Spawn dealing with, you know, again, the dead zones being expanded, lack of powers, vampires trying to take control of the earth, of the world, the realms, whatever you want to call it again. Man, but look at this work. It is this balls-to-the-walls action. Definitely a great looking book and a phenomenal read with Brett Booth on that artwork. So with that being said, guys, let's dive in to those webhead shout outs. Our first shout out of the day goes to Haas who sells mail call from Whatnot. Yeah, man, Whatnot is a great place to find some good comics that you don't come across too often. I also have a link where you can save 15% off of your first purchase not 15 percent i should say 15 dollars off of your first purchase so check out whatnot guys you can find some great stuff on there and thank you for sharing hoss next we have steven who's sharing off his two dollar garage sale finds got some captain america bane star wars comics great finds there steven thank you next we have mark who is uh, sharing his books that he found over the weekend, including a sealed wizard book. This is number 13, The Spawn Issue. I can tell you I never come across wizard issues. Congratulations on that find, and thank you so much for sharing. And then we have Bill Schroeder, who hit up the Mark Spears booth at Huntsville Popcom uh, Expo, 
and he had a awesome chat about my YouTube channel. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Mark Spears is a great guy. I've helped promote him with a couple of Kickstarters and his monster cards. Awesome guy. He watches my channel all the time. Thank you, Bill, for sharing that post. And if you guys want to become part of the group, just head on over to Facebook. Search for my group called Comic Book Corner 2.0. Webheads Unite. The group is absolutely for free. It doesn't cost anything to you. All you got to do is ask a few questions so you're not some scammer, some bot. And once I go over those questions, uh, you'll be approved for this wonderful community where you guys can share everything that you want about comic books within great taste, of course. And you can share books that you picked up recently, great cover finds, solid artwork, you know, storytelling from great writers, just everything and anything about comics. And the most important thing, you never know when you could get shouted out on future new comic book day hauls. All right, here we go. Continuing on with the haul, we have I Heart or I Love Skull Crusher. This is issue two. First issue was great as we learn about this character who wants to play this, uh, this, I, I forgot what it's called, man. The Screaming Painball Championships, right? And she has an idol and she looks up to that idol and she has an opportunity to bring a team together and they're a bunch of losers. <laughs> they don't fit the game, right? The the the, the uh, coach is a drunk. Uh, just a lot of funny elements in this comic. But you want to root for this girl. So I'm definitely looking forward to this next issue here. Let's hope it delivers. All right. And then we have Ultimate Black Panther. This is issue three. Solid book. Looks like we're going to get Storm in here. Maybe Killmonger. Nice artwork in here. This one's written by Brian Hill. Here's some more pages. Well, we get to see a deer or antelope or whatever that thing is. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't, I didn't say <laughs> it's a deer. There's not going to deer going to be a deer over there. Right. In, in, uh, in Wakanda. <laughs> so yeah, we got Killmonger in there. So we'll see what this issue has to offer, man. So yeah, ultimate black Panther. This is issue three. And then we got a third printing of Ultimate Spider-Man. This is issue two. Dude, I must have half a short box of freaking, you know, covers and second and third printings of these books at this point. But you know what? I like the character. The covers are cool. Why not? Then we have um, Spider-Woman. This is issue six. So this is the homage to the adventure in Fear. The man called Morbius, the living vampire. So we have Spider-Woman here on the cover as it continues her journey to the West Coast. So in case you want to know what this pays an homage to, it says it on the back of it. So I think that's that's kind of cool that they did that. And again, I love the old school feel for these modern covers. Here is the interior artwork. Is that Star? Where the hell has she been? Oh my gosh. You want to talk about a missing character for a hot minute. That is her for sure. So, yeah, we get to see Jessica going to the West Coast here. Does she form a team of her own? I don't know, man. We'll see. So, that's Spider-Woman issue six. Then we have the Spectacular Spider-Men. There was, like, two of these covers this week. So, this is issue two. This is obviously a... Well, why doesn't it pay homage? Like, like why doesn't it say that there? But this looks like it's an homage to, to uh, Hulk 181. I think that's what it is. As... He is facing the Jackal, which almost looks like the Abomination, right? I, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Here is interior artwork. The artwork is done by Alberto Ramos. I can't freaking talk today. And uh, it looks like they're in that coffee shop once again, which is fine, man. I like it. It's kind of like a low-key Spider-Man book with team-ups in there. Um, and this time it looks like we got some Daredevil stuff in here as well. So I think this is going to be a fun book written by Greg Wiseman. So looking forward to it. All right. So then here we go. The next one is Spectacular Spider-Man issue two. Uh, yeah. So here is the homage. Or is that? It's not the main cover because, yeah, I saw the main cover. Whatever. All right. The Amazing Spider-Man uh, homage here for the uh, for Morbius. So that's what this one pays homage to right here. So I thought that was kind of cool and picked that one up. I spent a lot of money on these variants this week. So, yeah. Anyway, Sam and Twitch, issue two. 
Uh, I think this is going to be the deciding factor for me when it comes to this book, guys, because, God, I just can't stand the freaking, the lettering in this book. Like, the word bu bubbles are very much needed. I just think the words get lost in the story, and it takes away from the story. It's just not my thing. Like, look at that. It's just weird for me. I don't know. But does this story improve? That's the key thing. I wasn't really keen on the first issue here, so we'll see if it improves. If not, unfortunately, I may have to make the drop here. So we'll see. All right. Then we have Miles Morales Spider-Man. This looks like the main cover here. Okay, so we have Spider-Man dealing with the ramifications of issue 300. He's freaking out because his little uh, shift character buddy uh, wound up possibly getting killed and now he's trying to destroy Rabble. So I think this book is good, man. It's been a lot of action and a lot of fun. So with that, I wound up getting the variant cover as this pays homage to the Tomb of Dracula, Lord of Vampires, issue 55. So that's pretty cool, man. See, there's the back. See, they did a good job there. So really nice looking cover. I love that right there. All right. Little independent action once again. We have Helen of Windor, issue 2. This is actually written by Tom King, which I think he's a perfect writer for this because we have this mansion, and this mansion has a ton of history. And he goes into detail of the mansion and all the rooms and all this stuff, and it worked out pretty good. I mean, see, again, once again, you can tell there's a lot going on in this comic book. The character herself, the main character, is very mysterious as well. Same with the grandfather. So hopefully we get these characters fleshed out a little bit more. But I recommend this book. This is good, man. All right, and then next we wind up getting uh, Ghost Rider Final Vengeance. This is issue two, a beautiful looking main cover. Absolutely love this. The hood is the new Spirit of Vengeance. There's the interior artwork in here. Some people are just down on this book because it's not Johnny Blaze. Hey, who cares, man? Johnny Blaze might not be Ghost Rider for a year or two. And if he does become the Ghost Rider again, hey, that's great. But we're exploring a different story. And a lot of the times you guys want different stories. But then when we don't want to, when we get the different story, you complain about who's the Ghost Rider. So, you know, sometimes you can't please everybody. So just go with the flow every once in a while. But anyway, this looks like a very horrific book. And uh, I'm on ride. I'm on ride on the ride to see, you know, how it goes. So, yeah, Ghost Rider, Final Vengeance. All right. And then... We wind up getting the Tomb of Dracula uh, homage. This is issue nine. So, yes, very cool right there. And then we got some more independent stuff, guys. We wind up getting Dudley Dot Dutson, issue one. This is written by Scott Snyder. I'm pretty sure this is a Corgi. I own a Corgi. The only difference is, is that it's a long tail. and The tail is not cut. And... Uh, I'm curious to see what Scott Snyder has to offer when it comes to him writing about a dog. So I know nothing else about this comic book. I know that I think this was a project that he came out with in the past. So yeah, we'll see. All right. And then we have Black Widow Hawkeye issue two. Love this cover right here. This is an homage to Giant Size Chillers issue one featuring the Curse of Dracula. So yeah, this time it's the Curse of Hawkeye. And then you got Hawkeye and Black Widow. That's that's nice, man. That is a, a an okay cover, in my opinion. All right. And then we got Cobra Commander, guys. We got issue four. Phenomenal book. Oh, I, I couldn't say better things about issue three. And we'll see if the action continues. And will we actually get Zartan in this series? Maybe he'll show up at the last page here. But love this book. Next, we have Avengers Twilight. This is book five. Uh, looks like we got Hawkeye in this one. And, you know, we've been seeing the, the continuation of the Avengers assemble throughout this series. You got that great David Acuna artwork in there. And we'll see what the journey can, how the journey continues here. Doesn't that guy look like Donald Trump? Like, look at that. So, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to this one here. We'll see where it goes. All right. And then I got. 7174 AD. I, I don't know. I wasn't going to pick this one up, but it's uh, it's from Image. It's a number one, and it's weird artwork. The paper in this is like, it feels like a paper bag. So this is, it, it smells weird, dude. Woo, it gives off this like odor. 
This is a, definitely a different comic book. I will definitely discuss this on Worthy Point. I can't even keep it open without me like, like gagging or, <laughs> or getting lightheaded. Holy shit. Anyway, oh my gosh. There you have it, guys. There is the whole for the week. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'm going to leave you more content right here. I moved my series top 10 most pulled comic books to Tuesdays and swapping it out with the top 10 most anticipated comic on Fridays. So it's more in line with the current comic book weeks. Why don't you go ahead and click on it. And as always, guys, remember, support the local comic shops. Keep buying, keep collecting. But always remember, read those comic books so we can have that comic book conversation. Guys, thank you and have a great new comic book day.